Annihilation. It always comes with a weird vibe. Always a great thing to have new stuff to try out, but at the same time, you kinda expect a boring journey through those 400 kills. Although at this point that is not a real concern for me, it takes a couple tries to see what the map has to offer and come up with a working plan, but it all works out at the end. So that is what I'm showing you today, not only the winning clear, but my process to achieve it. Of course, playing with 4 stars only, not like my decisions in life leave me any other choice. Remember to like the video if you like what you see. We all know how easy it is to beat Dark Knight's content these days, there are so many broken operators that simply win, and we know that is by design, that is what Hypergriff wants their game to be. But I find beauty in this suffering, in this strive for victory. I miss the good old days when I didn't know how to get past chapter 6. When I think about it, one of the things that keeps Dark Knight's heart to some extent is the not knowing. Lack of knowledge bites you really hard in this game. We all had the opportunity to, to experience a version of this lack of knowledge in Fire Within Sand, which is running right now. Oh boy, I have a lot to say about that one, but I'll leave it for another day. What I'm trying to say is, you can easily beat maps like Annihilation in your first try if you know what the map has to offer. They usually have a big gotcha moment at the end and you just gotta prepare for that. But that is exactly what I am avoiding here. I am going into this completely blind. I didn't even know we had another Lungman Annihilation. That is why this first squad I have two snipers. Because I saw the drone spawner and thought, that surely looks like a drone spawner. I better not leak those drones. Silly me, not even noticing it's clearly a scrap spawner. At least I noticed the holes on the right side, and Shaw will be here until the end because bringing her was an actual great decision. Besides Jessica and Umbriel who are doing nothing, and Shao who is being the GOAT, who else I have in my first attempt squad? There are two defenders because I expected bullies, and there are two boxes. That is clearly a mistake after you know the map, but at this point in time I was just guessing. I like Matterhorn a lot and his block 4 can do wonders. Dornar has great DPS and Nart's damage is good against the big guys. So two safe picks. Pudding is here because I wanted some AoE DPS, arts if possible. And she's a cute water dog, so why not? Ethan and Indigo to do some of that always amazing bind action. I really like Indigo's DPS, and together with Ethan it just scales up and up with the more enemies you have around. Since I was expecting bullies and this is annihilation, I expected them to come more than one at a time. So Bind is always great for situations like that, as well as stopping small enemies if they come all together. I bought Pearl String to heal the main lane and Perfumer to heal my snipers. Little did I know that I wasn't using them. But Perfumer ends up being a good choice to keep both sides of the map alive at the same time. Don't you love global healing? I know I do. And that last slot, they help me button. Utag. If I want melee arts, she's my default. And last but not least, for my vanguard, scavenger. Why the suspense when you can see her in the corner from the beginning? I don't know, man. But come on, nobody in this world deserves clicking flag bearers. We are stuck in a society built around a culture of flag bearers. But you too can come out of it. I believe in you. No. To be honest, I don't. I don't even believe in myself to completely stop using Myrtle. But we gotta say it, right? Go against the tides, or something like that. Anyway, everything goes nice until 200, as you would expect. The only thing that could go wrong before that is forgetting to bring a Vanguard. But from the moment I lost one of the devices before charging its skill, I knew this was a doomed attempt and the high pressure lane was too much for Durnar to handle. Knowing all those things, I changed my squad and for my second attempt, I had someone to deal with the left side snipers. The hunter dodges like a champ, and performer can heal her from far away. Or that was what I hoped at least. Cutter can intercept the red snipers before they kill the devices, and she can later come help damage the high pressure lane, together with Estelle, who I expected to just murder everything. And yay me, I survived the wave that killed me before. 
just look at all the healing drones left from it. But I ended up dying all the same, since Estelle doesn't have the best defense. And I took a step back to Durnar, which worked out with Cutter's help. But I also made the wrong decision to bring Quora for some reason and not even use her. Those things happen, you know. Can't always be progressing, sometimes you gotta fail really hard just to notice how dumb you are making yourself to be. And here I had one of those moments of realization and just brought Finecon. Why rely on the limited power of Indigo single target or putting measly 4 targets when I can hit literally every enemy in range? Yeah, took me a couple more attempts to figure out some stuff because at this point I was so confident in Pinecon that I was trying to cut ops with a smug, I don't need more of them. And also trying to figure out the deploy order to bait drones attacks, but Pinecon alone wasn't doing it. Maybe she can, but I didn't get there. So I brought in more true AoE, Gitano. Now I was unstoppable. I had the block, the bind, the true AoE, physical and arts. Oh, hello there Mr. Lin, I didn't know you were coming for a visit. Okay, this is still wouldn't work, because my lowest HP operator was Fearstream, who was tasked with healing the whole squad. And that was also lowering Pinecon's attack for most of the time. But this was basically the clear already. I just swapped it quote out for a ring, because Matterhorn's side didn't have much pressure, to help with damage while Pinecon's attack is down. And I also placed Perfumer on the left side. That way, B Hunter has no chance of dying whatsoever, and the pressure on Pure Stream will be relieved. The one bad thing those changes bring is that now Shaw dies at one point to Red King, but only one Hammer Boy walks through while she's out, so not a big deal. She comes back for the next. And that is it! A lot of skills flying around to DPS down the crown of enemies, and somebody juggling at the end to wait for the Red King's death. Took me 2 hours to get the clear going in completely blind, not bad. And thankfully there's no worrying about the auto, and it skips for the win. Now I would like to hear what you thought of this new annihilation in the comments. I had my fun, but what about you? This was Kuma, and I hope everyone has a very nice day. Peace out. <laughs> Sei